Hello, welcome to another Andy's Workshop video. In this video, we're going to be looking at wireless technologies, specifically um, Bluetooth, because I've recently been looking into Bluetooth, um, NFC, all that kind of interesting stuff, um, with, a, with a view to learning more about the technologies and building some interesting projects around them. Now, um, you, you know, if you want to get into Bluetooth or um, NFC, then you can easily buy, uh, you know, a high level board that will do it all for you. You could buy, for example, a Raspberry Pi or an ESP32. And if your goal is not solely to learn about um, Bluetooth or NFC, and you just want to get a job done, then one of those boards would um, serve you very well and allow you to get on with your project. But in my case, I like to get down and dirty, as it were, with the um, technologies to find out a bit more about how they work. So uh, I didn't choose an ESP32 or a uh, Raspberry Pi. I chose a, a device that I hadn't really heard of. I somehow managed to overlook it. It's an STM32WB55. Um, now these, are, it obviously is based around the STM32, you can tell that by the name, but it's not an STM32 in any way that you have seen one before. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that thing. Right, so this is the board I built around the STM32W55. That's it there. Um, it only comes in a QFN package or um, or a, uh, what's it called, BGA. You, you can't get it in the nice hobby-friendly um, lead, lead packages like the uh, LQFPs. I suspect that's because, because it's got wireless built in. You wouldn't want those leads, those pins, to become unwanted antennas. So to, to keep the signal integrity um, in check, they, what they do is only make it available in um, packages that don't have any leads. Now that makes it, of course, a bit of a pain to work with as a hobbyist, but this did actually work out well for me. I didn't have any mishaps building this thing. Um, now you can see, if I just bring it a little bit closer, and hopefully it'll stay in focus, we have the WB55 there, and it goes out, uh, the RF, um, pin comes out here and goes to a ceramic chip antenna that I, uh, I used. Now um, I'll explain a bit later about the mishaps I had with, with uh, getting this design to work. I am not an RF expert and I was put firmly in my place by trying to be one in the, in the um, previous iteration of this design. Um, the, the working design here is using a ceramic chip antenna. Now what you can't see because it's way too small is in there is a filter package, an MLPF um, format, I think it's MLPF format package. It's made by ST and it's designed to complement the uh, WB55 and it provides the necessary, um, all necessary filtering for the Bluetooth signal which is centered around 2450 um, megahertz. Um, and it provides all necessary filtering and bidirectional uh, for transmit and receive. Again, my attempts at being an RF expert backfired big time in the first iteration of this board, and you'll see that later, um, but this works. So we've got the WB55 there. Uh, it requires an oscillator, and um, just, just to get this board into something um, you know, demonstratable, something I could play with, I decided to make it battery powered so I can move it around. If you're going to be wireless, then you know the, one of the um, likely parameters for your project is that you're going to have to move it around to different, sp different spaces where power might not be available. So I decided to build in um, battery power. So we've got uh, two AAs there. And I'm, I'm not running this through a regulator to preserve um, battery life, to get the most out of it. I'm not using any kind of regulator. Those batteries are going straight to the um, STM32W55 to power it. So it's, it, given two fully charged um, AAs, you're looking at a range of 3.2 volts, which will steadily decay down to, um, in my case, there's a practical limit of around 1.8 volts because down here I've got a 1.8 volt uh, reference by a microchip. And I'm using that to do the conversion and analog to supply, sorry, to supply um, the power supply for the AD converter on board the WB55, which does the conversion of the temperature uh, readings that are coming in here. Oh yes, these are temperature sockets. Um, I've got NTC thermistors um, going into these sockets here, and they go through a resistive divider into the uh, WB55, and I use the voltage reference here, the 1.8 volt voltage reference, to convert the, um, the voltage to a temperature reading using the well-known standard formulas. Um, so given that that's a 1.8 volt reference, that gives me a, a lower, a lower 
um, like a level for the uh, batteries, the battery volts here, so it can't drop below 1.8 and still can't, still work. Um, other features of this this board, well, I've just this is my second version of it, so um, it's a bit better than the first one where a lot of stuff didn't work. I've got uh, external power input facility here. You can switch the battery, the whole thing on and off with a switch here. Debugging connection over here. Um, debug output, use arts, use art output here in LP UART1 output if you need to do debugging for the wireless uh, stuff because the ST stack has that built in. Turned out I didn't need it, so there's no header fitted there. And an external reset button. Right, so let's have a look at um, this thing in action. It is actually, as you can see, powered up. And if you were, if you were watching keenly, you would see that every 10 seconds, uh, the power light flashes there. And that's just to show you that it's, that it's uh, alive or show me that it's alive. I picked a red LED because they require the least voltage to run and that, that LED will carry on flashing right down to the uh, low level of the battery. So let's bring in my phone and we'll switch it on, power it up, come on. Sometimes it works. Right, we have here the beacon scanner. This is an Android application. Um, it's you know, pretty plain, uh, works well. So if I hit uh, play, it should start showing stuff. And there you go. It's showing the, um, the, the Bluetooth software in here is uh, running Eddystone beacon um, protocol, which is a protocol invented by and abandoned by Google. Um, but it's, it's quite useful because it doesn't require pairing. With, um, it's a Bluetooth technology that just keeps on transmitting. You can't put much into it. You can't transmit arbitrary data really easily, but it, it is quite useful for transmitting um, a temperature and a voltage. So you can get something going real quick. So I've got here, it's my URL, because that's one of the things you're allowed to send in, a um, Eddystone uh, beacon. And I've got the, wake up, and I've got the uh, battery voltage here, which is being read as um, 2.6 volts. These are old batteries, these are not fresh. Um, and it's being up for a thousand seconds, which is fair enough. And the temp oh yeah, the temperature is reading 19.1, which is about right for this room. If I put my finger and thumbs over this, over this uh, sensor, it should start rising. The interval um, for rereading is about 10 seconds. So yeah, it's starting to climb slowly. The, the sensor will uh, start reading over 20 soon, hopefully. I sit there holding it. Yeah, there we go. It's it's because the um, the interval for sending the URL is really fast, but the interval for sending um, new temperature data and battery voltage data is is relatively slow. It's something like ten seconds. I can't recall exactly how it, I set it in the firmware, but it's all it's all working. As you can see, it's starting to rise. That's all really nice. So I'll stop that there. Some of these things will actually give you an approximation of the distance. Oh yeah, there it is. 0 0.04 meters. It's yeah, okay, that's not really accurate, is it? But it's, it's as you get further away, it's, um, it gets less accurate. It sort of estimates the uh, distance away from the, that the sensor is from the phone by uh, measuring the attenuation of the signal, I think it is. But it's all, it's all quite clever. I've tested this, uh, the range of this, and it's, it's pretty good. I can walk downstairs. I'm upstairs in my house at the moment. So I can walk downstairs and it will transmit through the floor. It quickly falls away if I try and go through many walls. We have a mixture of um, soft, like, you know, plasterboard walls. I think you call it uh, drywall in the US. And we have a mixture of that, that and um, solid walls where the house has been extended. And it, it doesn't really get through solid walls particularly well, but uh, dry, uh, dry wall, as you call it, and, and plasterboard, as we call it here, uh, no problem. It can go through several of those. Okay, so that shows it in action. Now, I'm not going to make this a really long video because uh, there's not really much to demonstrate. It's a board that uh, reads temperatures, up to four of them. Um, now, if you're planning to uh, play with the WB55, there are some <laughs> limitations. This, it, this really is um, not like any STM32 that you've seen before. You have multiple memory segments in it. When you read the, um, the spec for it, you can see it was, say, 256K, 512K, 1 meg, whatever as flash memory, you think, oh, loads of memory, but not really, because a big chunk of it is taken out of it by the Bluetooth firmware. And of course, that's not, um, you know, that's not optional, you've got to have it. Uh, so you, can, you have to load up the firmware, and you can only do that with an assistance of a second CPU on board this thing. There's, there's a, the main CPU is an F4, fine, you know, you know all about the F4, you can use that yourself. 
but there's a second Cortex M0 Plus on board of this thing, which is responsible for, for running the firmware. You can't access that. Um, it, it communicates with the main part of the, uh, the flash, with the main program, through a messaging system, basically some shared memory. Um, but it, it fences off a large part of the flash for itself. So you, you, when you're planning your projects around a WB55, be careful to size it correctly because you haven't got all the memory for yourself. It's also a right pain to program. Um, you have to, first thing you do when you come to the factory is you have to update the firmware. Um, the, the, the firmware updater service, which is responsible for loading new stacks, that has to be updated first. And then once you've updated that, only then can you use it to update um, the, a, you know, a Bluetooth stack to start working with. Uh, so it, it can be a real pain to work with, particularly because ST's documentation is rubbish. I mean, let's be honest, it's, it's, you can only get a lot of key information from forum posts on ST's site. And without those, you, you'd kind of be floundering in the dark, really, as to how to get this thing to flash, because it, it's not, not easy at all. But once going, there is quite a lot of um, firmware examples you can get from, from ST to work with. And they're really low level. You, you go, there's none of this high level, you know, make me a connection, transmit some data stuff. You're going right down and dirty into the Bluetooth protocol when you, when you use it, which I, I wanted. It's, I'll be honest with you, if I wanted some easy, I'd have just bought a Pi. But you know, I wanted this to learn about um, different aspects of the protocol. And I, I did find it fun. Anyway, that's me waffling on enough. Um, I hope you've enjoyed seeing a preview of this board and seeing a little demonstration in action. If you want to see the full um, gory details, then um, do visit my website and you can see all of the trials and tribulations I had with the first iteration of this board that didn't work. Um, you can see uh, all the firmware, it's all there for free. You can download it from GitHub and all the project files for the board, they're all there as well. Um, and hopefully, I've documented enough there about the um, STM32WB55 to help you if you do need to do firmware flashing yourself and you can skip all of the mistakes that I made. Um, okay, thank you for watching.